Okay, let's take a look at how to figure out the monthly car payment on a particular vehicle. Let's suppose that you walk into a dealership and you find the car of your dreams and it costs you $35,750. And this is the car that you'd really like to walk home with. And at the end of the day, it's your, you don't have any money to put down on this car. This is, this is what the amount of the loan is that you're going to need to take out to walk to walk out with the car that you want. Um, right now, car payments are about, interest rates are fairly low. You can find an interest rate that you qualify for at 3.9% uh, if you've got decent credit. Um, so we'll use this amount for our values. Of course, we're having monthly car payments. So um, my K value is going to be 12 when I talk about that. And most car loans are five-year loans, although you'll find um, these days that there are more and more cars being available with six and seven year car loans for new cars and I highly encourage you to do the math on those because that's kind of a dangerous thing to to do in the long run but um, at this point let's just say that we're gonna do our more traditional five-year car loan so this is the car of my dreams this is the interest rate that I qualify for this is the length of terms of the loan um, I've got that five-year loan commitment, and I want to find out what's my monthly payment. So keeping in mind that loans are always um, considered payout annuities when we're talking about these sorts of loans, um, we're going to use the payout annuity formula. In this case, the monthly payment is that regular recurring withdrawal, which is going to be um, D. Um, so everything else is going to kind of get filled in here. P0 or P0 is the amount of the loan, which in this case is that $35,750. Um, R is the 3.9%. Make sure you change it to a decimal, so I get 0 .039. Um, K is how many compounding periods per year, which since we're doing monthly payments is 12. N is the number of years of my loan, which in this case is 5. And I think that's all the info that I have. So next thing that you do is looking at the original formula. Go ahead and plug in what you know. P naught, or that starting amount, $35,750, is equal to D, I do not know, times parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus R, which is 0 .039, divided by K, which was 12. Close the parentheses. Um, up in the exponent, and again, I cannot encourage enough, put that exponent in parentheses, it's going to be negative n, which is 5, times k, which is 12 in the exponent for this car loan. Uh, then my formula finishes after the exponent, it's got a big set of parentheses, divide by the whole thing, um, which has r, which I know is 0 .039, so that goes up on the top here. There we go, divided by 12 on the bottom. And there is my whole big thing. Again, I want to solve for D. D is really basically times by everything here in the box. So if I figure all of this out, I can do all of that in one step on my calculator because there's no variables there. Um, just like always, be cautious in your parentheses applications. So we start with parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus 0 .039 divided by 12 close those parentheses, take it to the exponent power, so that caret button. Again, put that exponent inside of parentheses, in this case, negative 5 times 12. Close the parentheses for the exponent. Um, hit the arrow button if you need to to bring it back to the main level, and then the close the parentheses for the top of the expression. Then I want to divide that. On the bottom, I have 0 .039 divided by 12. Type that in, close your parentheses, hit enter, and I've got this value here that's next to the D. So copying everything over, I have 35,750 on the left equals D times on the right. I just figured that out to be 54.4323 blah, blah, blah. So then divide by the 54 number on each side of the equation. That gets the D alone on the right. And on the left, I go ahead and do that math. $35,750 for the car divided by um, 
that 54.43 number. And since that's the last answer I had on my calculator, I can just use our little shortcut, hit enter, and I come up with 6, excuse me, 656.78 when I round is D. And so that means that my monthly payment for that car payment is $656.78. Um, so if I have to finance the full amount of the car, um, even at this low interest rate of 3.9%, I'm still going to have to do um, car payments of well over $600 every month. Now, if you can't afford over $600 a month worth of car payments, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't buy this car. Um, what it means is you need to bring the loan amount down. Um, so if you would like a lower monthly payment, the way that we balance that is by making an upfront down payment on the vehicle here. And if I can make a down payment, I can bring the amount of the loan down, which will bring my monthly payment down. Uh, of course, usually that involves saving up for that down payment or doing a trade-in if you actually have an investment from earlier where you could trade a vehicle in. That would bring down the cost of the loan, which would then, of course, bring down the cost of the monthly payment that you get by using the annuity formula. Um, so in this case, where the question is, what's your monthly payment? What you're doing is just solving the annuity formula for D, plug everything in that you know, use all the stuff and steps we've been doing so far, um, and you'll be in good shape. This formula will work for house loans. This formula will work for car loans. Um, this formula will work for any type of financed item, um, whether you're financing a car repair or a refrigerator purchase or anything along those lines. If you want to know what the monthly payment is, this is the formula to use, and this is the process to solve that. So it's a super powerful tool, and um, it can help you do your research before you walk into a, um, a purchase agreement. Um, so it should make you a better consumer and um, help you with some good financial decisions. So uh, in the next video, so go ahead and try a couple problems here, calculating the monthly payment. In the next video, we'll talk about um, how to figure out down payments and how that changes the price. And I think we're just about done with this unit. Okay.